everybody. Um, so I have a guest today. I have Kevin Lee with me. Hello. Hello. <laughs> nice to be here. <laughs> so Kevin, do you want to tell us a bit about yourself, a bit about um, what you do? Yeah, of course. So I'm a playwright and also direct and produce plays as well. Mm -hmm. um, been doing it for a number of years, I suppose, maybe about six years, I guess. Cool. Um, in terms of actually getting productions on, I was writing a little bit before that as well. Mm -hmm. So maybe about nine years in total mm -hmm. um just finished a play um a couple of preview shows for a new play called the gift uh which lovely emma's been working on with me as well um mm -hmm. so yeah and yeah about that was my seventh play which oh, wow. has been staged um around london cool. yeah so just finished that just resting now nice. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you some good rest yeah so and um, what like what first inspired you to sort of start writing or get into writing yeah, well, I, I, it's funny because I didn't really come from any kind of theatre background. Mm -hmm. um, you know, certainly going to school and, and things like that, it wasn't much of an outlet of theatre at, at school for me. Um, and it was just wasn't really something I'd, I'd really known about or taken an interest to. I didn't really go to theatre growing mm -hmm. up and that kind of thing. And, and I just, um, when I was in my mid-20s, I guess about 24, I just went to the theatre one day. I just decided, why not, you know, do mm -hmm. something a bit different. And um, yeah, I went to see a little play at the Bush Theatre called Tinderbox by Lucy Kirkwood. Uh, and it was, that. yeah, mm. it was starring a young Sheridan Smith. Wonder what she's up to now. <laughs> um, but uh, no, yeah, not and, not. And, not <laughs> yeah. Um, and and it was just so exciting. It was really exciting just being in this little tiny room above a pub, about yeah. 50 people, um, you know, laughing and just feeling this kind of excitement in the room at the same time. And, and it was a bit of a, it was quite a, uh, yeah, like, unconventional sort of play it was mm. a bit different so I was really kind of blown away by what was possible I guess within the theatre and um, I just got really compelled and I just kept going to see things and I uh, just kept going and going and and just see you know anything and everything it was mm. quite accessible then and, and um, I just eventually thought I want to give writing a go and then so I guess yeah. about maybe a year year and a half later I just sort of sat down uh, didn't tell anyone about it ever um, <laughs> just kind of wrote wrote something which I thought was on my mind or thought might yeah. make a good play um, and kind of finished it and probably looking back now it's a bit rubbish but, um, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I wrote something else which was probably even worse and probably took me months and months and refined it but um, then I wrote something else after that which was kind of for a competition and, and I think because I had a bit of direction and I didn't really know anyone within the industry at all mm. you know I, I, um, I kind of I, I was kind of looking up competitions and things online and I saw this thing and it had a theme and then I thought, oh, well, I might have played for that. And then it kind of gave me a bit more focus to write something. And then uh, I wrote I wrote something and it won, which was like bizarre, really weird. Cool. Yeah. Um, mm. So so that was kind of the start of everything, really. Um, and so one other thing I did do was I went on a, a kind of weekend course at the Soho Theatre, which was probably in maybe about uh, 2012 so so and and it was just a weekend course on an introduction to playwriting yeah. um and it was just such a foundation i think first of all in terms of just meeting like-minded people because none of my friends and and family were really into theater or writing and stuff like mm. that so, so it was a kind of people definitely well, yeah, yeah yeah just to to kind of feel like you're in a safe space i suppose and feel mm. like you know uh i guess it's the thing is it's quite reassuring when, when you speak to other people, you listen to other people, you, you kind of get, oh, it's not just me who's making that mistake or it's not just me who's struggling with that. Mm. Um, so that it's was kind of comforting, isn't it? definitely, mm. yeah. And it was run run by um, someone who was yeah, obviously working in Sophia and it was a playwright there as well. So it was a good place to, to ask people questions as well. Mm. And, um, and, and, you know, I sent them a sample of my work and we talked about it and we were very encouraging about it. So it, it just gave me a lot of self-belief as well that I was... Um, you know starting out but I was doing a lot of the right things and mm -hmm. how to shape things as well so that's yeah that's my kind of starting point really and now yeah. it's sort of yeah six years later and um, yeah still writing and still you know putting plays on so it's um, yeah it's tiring sometimes but it's just <laughs> it's um, you wouldn't change it for the world it's it's the best feeling when you know you've got something in a room and yeah. people are reacting to it and talking about it after and um, stuff so yeah it's really, yeah, that must really be encouraging actually getting, yeah. like, there's getting great responses on something yeah. that you've written it's the only thing that's yeah. like I guess you do a film or TV and, and with theatre there's just an instant response it's very immediate you know, isn't it that's it yeah, yeah. It's quite special. Um, so and yeah everyone's sharing the same thing at the same time mm. so 
um, yeah, it's it's an amazing feeling, like yeah. when you when and and it's probably what keeps drawing you back into doing it. Yeah, after you finish I a play, think you think, so. oh god, that's like you know tiring and everything but actually it's just yeah it just it really comes back to you and you really want to do yeah, it again so that feeling outweighs like yeah, all of the tired that's it yeah stress or whatever yeah, <laughs> yeah that's yeah. it and there's plenty to write about as well so yeah exactly you know, so changing. like what makes you want to write something new like or write like start a new project mm. do you just get inspired by something or do you feel like you think oh that's that issue is really important i want to write about that yeah. or um I, it's yeah i don't know it's it's hard really i think you i think with starting writing you kind of if something keeps eating away at you a little bit you know yeah. maybe it might be i think for a lot of writers there might be say something in the news something um something that's quite personal to you i think most writers start out writing something that's quite personal to them yeah, because there's something so. that that kind of eats away at them like i said and 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 I think if the idea keeps coming at you and you can't kind of get away from it, then you should probably write some notes down about mm. it and um, and get some ideas together. And then if you feel like you can get a, a, an idea of the story of where you want it to go um, and you can kind of basically sort of structure structure a plot, then I think you might be onto something with, with in terms of mm. writing a play. Um, you know, I tend to nowadays I tend to structure a bit more when I start writing. So if I feel like I've got enough in terms of having a beginning a middle and an end and maybe a few twists or something happens within it then then i'll try to um then i'll then i'll go about starting to write a play Mm. but um yeah it's it's normally things i i my starting point for writing is i I think me personally always want to write about stuff i'm interested in um you know yeah, yeah because then if you're trying to write or tailor for certain people then you know, I think I think it's something a bit lost about it because you can't please everyone um, mm. all of the time. You know, mm. it's not um, it's not it, it, you're there's a sense that you're inviting people into your world when when you're offering something up. And then when you put a play on, you know, um, you know, I'm very lucky. Like there's been lots of people have been very kind and very nice about stuff. But but, you know, even even if people are critical or they don't quite like it, it's it's up to them. You know, I mean, for me, when writing a play and putting it on, you know, as long as I've done my work on it, I've worked hard, I've worked on all the characters, I've worked on, you know, the plot and, and understand what I'm trying to say within it, then mm. then I'm just offering it up to people and saying this yeah. this is me and this is what I've, what I've been working on. I suppose as well, like people don't have to necessarily ag- like ag- agree. Mm. It's just, it's, I feel like it's important to start a discussion. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So I feel, yeah, I feel like it doesn't necessarily matter if people like come up to you and they're like, oh, that was amazing yeah. or I yeah. totally agree or it's, but as long as it's starting a discussion about the topic I think Course, that's yeah. important yeah. you know everybody's yeah. made up of, of different things aren't they and, and mm. everyone's got their own tastes and their own things that they like whether it's comedy or drama and tv film music so everyone has different tastes so everybody's view is going to be different and really mm. you know I'm happy to hear all opinions and because it's uh, uh, fundamental fundamentally in a play it's it's um it's about how it makes people feel so you mm. can go into really intricate lines and do loads of complex work about knowing about how certain things work within a, mm. a government or an industry and things like that. But really, you've got to make it palatable to to yeah. an audience. So, and if if you can offer something that's maybe maybe there's a sense of uh, enlightening people or educating in some way or just even even more just kind of saying um, this is what goes on in this world and 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 you know people might be interested in it. You know, we watch lots of things on the TV and films that we have absolutely no idea about or no clue mm. about, but but then we become interested because really it's about human beings and how mm. human beings would um, would deal with the situation. And, yeah. and it's not that far removed from you, is it? Like no. as, as a person, you know, what if this was me in that situation? And, and generally when we watch plays, it's exciting because they're people that are different to us, a lot yeah. of them. And, and we get quite compelled by the actions they take mm. and the, the risks they take and the flaws they have as well, um, yeah. which makes it But also so. maybe recognisable because they're all sort of yeah so absolutely sort of people connect yeah really well. relatable yeah, yeah that's something really interesting there so um your latest piece the gift mm. um so this is a piece that we just put on uh at the beginning of this week at the drayton arms theater so we just finished just the two nights yeah. um so i think the the subject matter is very interesting and there's kind of a lot going on we're talking about social media we're also talking about connection and kind of yeah. um what it, what is going on for people that we have no idea about and yeah. what um what sort of compelled you to start writing that because I feel like it sort of came out out of the blue like you started yeah. writing it you were thinking I'll have a little rest for a bit and then it just sort of yeah I, I did <laughs> I, well <clears throat> saying after the last play I did which was 
which was in September, I kind of took uh, September 2018. So I took a bit of a rest in terms of, not like I was still going to the theatre and things like that, but I just, um, I wasn't sort of all of a sudden thinking, what am I going to do next? What am I going to do next? And, and, and really luckily something else came to me and, and I just had an idea for, for this play. And I guess the thing that it, I guess maybe the thing that I wanted to explore was um, how our relationship with social media and and maybe some of the extremities of it. So, you know, there's there's things within the play about, um, you know, there's, there's kind of a starting point in terms of like there's six different types of characters and they talk mm. about their own relationships a bit and some, some are a bit more neutral, some are a bit more, you know, their life depends on it, some people really hate it. Um, so it, it's, and, and all these kind of different ways that, that people use it. And I guess the play maybe explores, um, you know, some of the extremities, like I said, about, you know, what happens when we become too obsessed with it or, you know, the, the need, the desire. You know, I did a lot of, um, well, I did a fair amount of research of what, what I could within the time about, um, you know, addiction to social media and, and how mm. that really affects. And, and in a lot of ways, it's, it's quite worrying of how much of a new thing this is. Um, you know, you can really compare it to some of the symptoms, I guess, or, or prognosis of things that, that go on in other, in other mental health conditions, maybe mm -hmm. as well. And, and yeah, I mean, well. these are extreme circumstances, but we, it's, it's such a new thing. Um, I guess maybe in the last 10 years with WhatsApp and, you know, like YouTube or whatever it is, you know, all, all these things that, that people can become quite addicted to their mobile phone. It's like having another limb. And if you go missing yeah. for like, half an hour then it's like you know they, they kind of uh you know it's it's hard it's hard for people to you know know where they are in the world um and you know it, i guess i guess there's a generation that's grown up that have always had the internet have always had a mobile phone mm. um and you know it's and and i guess the extremes are a kind of you know the, the importance that people place on things like that so you know we, even just something as simple as um, you know, putting a photo up and it getting mm. so many likes within 10 minutes and if it doesn't, they might take it down, you know. Um, mm. So that was something like on a, on a basic level that I wanted to explore. Something um, you were no noticing in the world sort of? Or? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, mm. you know, you have like, uh, you know, I think I think as a starting point, like, you know, friends and things like that and how people use it and um, I'm not massively, you know, I don't use social media a lot. I, obviously when I've got something to promote, I might do, but... Um, <laughs> But, uh, you know, I use it, I guess, an ample amount. Like, uh, you know, I, I don't, uh, you know, it's not um, something that's on my mind all the time. But, you mm. know, I still check it every day and, and things like that. So it was it was an interesting thing to explore. And, and I think just as a point, I wanted to, I think as a writer, there's always a curiosity. So, you know, when it yeah. does come to doing my research and, and finding things out, because I don't want to write a play that, of course, I want it to be relatable to people on some level, but or, or, on, on, on a lot of it, but... But um, at the same time, I want people to, you know, maybe find new things out as well, or mm. things that I've researched, and I can offer that up and bring that to the world. Mm. Um, yeah, so I want to so, write about something that you're curious about as well. Yeah, definitely. Audience, really. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And 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 I think um, I hope with that play, um, I I always love plays where it leaves you with more questions than answers. Yeah. And I think there's definitely, you know, and particularly with one character within the play who who it's kind of. Uh, you know based around there are lots more lots more questions than yeah. answers within that play and, and certainly in terms of the feedback and everything we've got and and the reactions on the on the audience on that night you know people there's, had a lot of questions about did, the characters yeah. and their relationships yeah i absolutely. wouldn't give them the answers either. <laughs> <laughs> um because i don't at the same time i, I kind of feel that you, you know, don't want to give them your answer you want yeah, them to sort of decide i think it's open yeah. as well you know i think mm. for the character of lucy within the play um you know, I said to the actress who was playing it that there's a possi there's there's at least two possibilities for every line that, mm. that it's got. You know, on the one hand it might be fine, on the other hand it might be really might traumatic. Be some, yeah. So so that's kind of the interesting thing to to write about and to leave it open. And then and of course when you talk to an audience after, then it's you know when they're telling you what they think and you just sort of say, oh yeah, mm. okay, that's interesting. <laughs> just like try not to reveal too yeah. much. So that's um. That's good because it feels alive, you know, the play mm. feels alive and it feels like there's there's still lots to explore and yeah. um, looking forward to kind of going back and having a look over it in the next few weeks as well. Yeah, do you have any plans to sort of take it further? Um, yeah, I, I think always after a play it's good to just um, let it breathe for a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, let it reflect because I think when you do go back to 
to reading it, you remember all the things that happened in the stage performance, and you and you feel like you know maybe oh, is there bits I want to cut down? Is there bits mm. I want to add to? Is there more characters I want to know a bit more about? Um, so I definitely that's my starting point in terms of um, just going having a look over it again, refining it, and and answering questions about it. Um, it was quite an early draft, so I, there's still you know personally as a playwright, I there's lots more work that I do. As, mm. as a basis for, for any play I put on, you know, character work and plot development and things like that, which which I haven't fully gone into yet. Um, I think, judging by the reactions from the audience, from the audiences, and we, we put over a few nights, so it's good to get different reactions. Um, it feels like there's a lot of life within this play, and, and I think it's a very relatable subject and quite a compelling subject as well. Mm. So I'd love to put it on again. I'd love to... to um, put it out to a wider audience um yeah and just just for a longer run and and, and mm. see how it does and and of, of course you know see what more we can do with the staging mm. and what more possibilities there are if we have a, a longer rehearsal period as well um mm. to see where we can take it so Brilliant. definitely yeah cool cool and um as a as a writer do you have any kind of if you're going to give a couple of tips to kind of aspiring writers or yeah. people who are writing at the moment what what advice would you give yeah um i think uh First of all, it's it's an obvious one, but keep going. You know, it's it's um it's really hard, and I think that you can you can give all this advice to writers about things that you've done, but um, really you have to make your own mistakes and mm. and kind of embrace them in knowing that you you will make mistakes and things will be rubbish, and you know, especially if you you know you write a first draft and and you think it's not quite where you want it to be. I think you need to certainly get to the end of the first draft. I, I, I one thing I'm very big on is in saying to aspiring writers when you know if I'm teaching and things like that I um I if they've got an idea for play and they've, they've got an idea of where it's going getting to the end I try to say to them just to finish it in one go mm. and not maybe write the first scene and then go back and over analyze that first scene because I think it does it's not helpful because I think you need to um let the characters grow and if you think of new things along the way that's great but I wouldn't necessarily or me personally I wouldn't go back and and scrutinise each scene after you've written it because it doesn't... Sort of allow don't you. censor it all. Just yeah. allow the first draft just to let, come let out it and then breathe. get back to it. Yeah, because mm. it's an amazing feeling, actually, once you've um, done a first draft, you're like, I've finished something, you know, mm. I've completed it, and that's quite a, a satisfying feeling. Mm. And then I think most most writers, if not all, would probably say they're, they're rewriters. You know, they, they, they'll, their real work comes within a second draft and a third yeah. draft when they're refining it, when they're, you know, for me personally, I do, um, I don't do a lot of work on a first draft because it's almost like overfilling your mind and it becomes... So you want to get it all out first, I yeah, guess. Yeah, you know, so, so I don't do... I don't know. I don't need to know everything. I need to know about the character. I need to know a fair amount, or I need to know, and I need to know a fair amount about the plot and, and where mm. it's going and stuff. But I don't. Um, I don't plan everything to the finest detail on the first draft. I'll mm. try as long as because I, I for me it's just you. You can end up trying to cross reference stuff too much in terms of your notes and your plot. So you want to have mm. a little bit of freedom. So of course you want to create some parameters around the first scene, the second scene, the third scene, and what's going to happen in it, where the characters are, and. Um, and what's going to happen but but really if you for me I've, I've, and I've done this before I've written loads and loads and loads of notes and when I've actually gone to writing the draft it's been really hard to do because I'm constantly thinking oh this happens in this You're bit this happens in this bit like yeah down mine's too clogged up so that's yeah. just from personal experience I think try and once you've got enough ideas and enough you know enough about the characters or you feel you feel the characters I suppose then write something because it will change it will definitely mm. change and, and it's accepting that change and then when it comes to the second draft, then I normally do a bit more work on the characters. You know, you know, who is this character? What's their name? What's their age? What's their occupation? What do their mum and dad do for a living? Mm. Where do they grow up? And things like that. So, and then because it gives you just those little more bit uh, more in terms of percentages, and 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 you can just make so it a layering bit more cool. it all up. I guess. As yeah, you go definitely. Along. Yeah. Mm. So, so I guess those would be my main sort of tips for aspiring writers. Um, mm. And and um, yeah, like I always say, just enjoy it as well. I think the minute mm. you're not enjoying it, then it's it's too much like hard work, and and it should be it should be a fun process as well. Yeah. You know, you get to create these worlds and create these characters and this situation and and tell this story, and it's it's yeah. really important. It's really you can always important. Always come to back to something as well, can't you? Because you don't have yeah, to just yeah. keep slogging at it if you're not enjoying Definitely. it at that time. Just yeah. come, have some space and come back, and yeah. it often makes let it breathe. Yeah, let it breathe. Let yeah. it breathe. Definitely, and and you know no it's you know it's just a play like you know it's something you can come back to it's not 
yeah. not um, a matter of urgency. And and I think you know with with good piece of art, you should it shouldn't be rushed. You should take your time, and you mm. should um, let, yeah let let it um, let it develop as it needs to. Some as you're building something, you know it's 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 a craft as well. That's really important mm. that it's a craft and and it takes time to shape and time to develop and. Um, yeah, just think of it like that. That always helps me as well. That in terms of that, I'm building something. It doesn't have to be written overnight, or yeah. you know, within a certain deadline. Allow yourself that time. Yeah, allow yeah, yourself that time. Definitely. So yeah. also as a writer and um, as a director, because you, you direct mm. all or uh, all of the pieces. Uh, I've mixes. directed the last few plays. Okay, yeah. yeah. So I, I I did direct something a few years ago, and then yeah. worked with a few other directors and stuff. Great. But um, yeah, been directing a bit. Yeah, yeah. really enjoy it. So you work with actors a lot as a writer and mm. as a director. So do you have any advice for actors? Actors, yeah, in terms of their writing or like well, in terms just, of just um, in rehearsals work. or how they work or yeah, what well, you what what's great for you as a writer as a director? Yeah, well, I think um, as a writer who's also directing, um, and I guess it's maybe an advantage of, of working with actors a lot in class and things like that. But I really. I'm really fascinated to hand it over and to mm. see how they interpret the roles, you know, um, without me really even saying anything. So, you know, if we, if at the first point we do a table read, that gives me so much information because um, it's the actors, the actors got their own craft, you know, their own mm. discipline. And I'm really in all of that and, and wanting to find out, um, you know, what they bring to it. And then that helps me learn a lot more about the character. Um, I, I kind of feel that if, if the writing speaks well enough and it's good enough in, in that sense, then it will speak to the actors as well mm. and they can make their own ideas of it. And really it's just a case of, of coming together. It's not with directing uh, with actors, it's more a case that I, let's just try it out. Let's see what happens yeah. if we do this, if we do that. Um, you know, I, you know, I was saying to people before, like even if someone, uh, you know, we do a scene and someone does it brilliantly, and you know, we think, oh, how can we, like, you know, improve on that? That was great. I'd still try and pull it to the other extreme, or try and get them to yeah. do it in a different so way. Maybe have actors be ready to try things yeah, differently, and there's definitely. sort of no wrong answer. I guess. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I think you've got to, you've got to go in another direction to to see how it would feel. Because if you mm. don't, then um, you know, I don't think you're exploring the character enough, or you're exploring exploring the play enough. You know, and it might it might not it might be the case that. Um, you know, sometimes that it you won't it won't need to go in that direction, but I think it's important to go there to just to see because it yeah, might give so you a couple of little to bits try more. different ways of yeah. playing your character or scenes, and yeah. just to just be kind of yeah. I guess have an idea in your mind of what you want to do, but Definitely. also be prepared to try a lot of different yeah. stuff. Just yeah, just to be open and expressive. That's how I like a rehearsal room to be, mm. you know, and and to to just be yeah free flowing and and full of ideas and and. Um, you know, I like working around improvisation uh, a lot and I like working, yeah, just, you know, like if we can do like line work and things like mm. that. So, um, yeah, just, just for it to be free and expressive, I think, in, in a rehearsal room, it's, it seems to work for actors. So it works for me as well. It's exciting. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, cool. Definitely. Awesome. OK, well, thank you so much for coming in, Jack. Right, it's my pleasure. Your work and thank about you. writing. And yeah. uh, thank you, everybody. And... Uh, yeah, great, cool. <laughs> um, subscribe, click below if you want more videos. And you can follow Kevin on social media and find out about his upcoming classes and shows and things like that. So, bye. Thank you, bye. <laughs>